Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to use the time to tell you about the story of how I first ended up here in Japan and I first got in touch with the local culture. Elena and I now have been here for almost four weeks. We're getting ready to pack our stuff and leave back for Europe um, in a couple of days. And our experience here has been extremely different from when I first came to Japan. Number one, it's always a very different experience for me if I get to spend a longer time in a country and actually just work and live here than being a tourist and trying to see as much as I can within a few days. But then there's also a lot that has changed since I first came here nine years ago in September 2010. And I'll go into the details of that in a later video. But one of the things that I remember vividly is how hard it was to get around and to communicate with locals. Back then, we didn't have a single map for all public transportation systems. We had a number of maps that you all needed to combine and kind of figure out your way between those stations. Number two, all those maps were in Japanese as everything else. It was extremely hard for me to find a station name on one of those maps because I don't have any experience reading kanji so for me this often was like where's Waldo in real life and I think there's two big factors that have changed next summer Tokyo is hosting the Summer Olympics which means they are becoming a lot more open and they're currently changing a lot of things to be available in English to make it much easier for tourists next summer to get around Tokyo and number two is data as soon as we got here we both got a data sim mine is even unlimited I think I paid about 60 bucks for 30 days which is an extremely good deal compared to what I would pay for roaming a few gigabytes on my Swiss SIM card. And data makes all the difference when trying to get around. Not only does it now give me access to Google Maps, but it also allows me to use Google Translate on the fly, which has been extremely helpful when communicating, let's say, with a taxi driver or someone outside the bigger cities that doesn't know English too well. But that's not the point of this video. I wanted to tell you about something called standby tickets and that's how I first got to Tokyo. So if you've been following my vlog, then you've probably seen Augie in one or the other video. Augie is a very dear friend of mine. He lives in Dallas, Texas, although he's lived all over the States and he works for American Airlines and has always worked in the airline industry. And while I'm fascinated by just looking at aircraft and reading up on them and tracking flights and so on and so forth, Augie has definitely opened a whole new world to me when I first started traveling with him at age, I think it was about 18 or 20 back then. And there's one trip that particularly stands out. After we had first met in 2004 at Alliance Youth Exchange Camp in Wisconsin. Every time afterwards that I came back to the US and I've let him know, he would just surprisingly show up and come have dinner with me and whoever I was traveling with or come to Central Park while I was living in New York for an afternoon. So it was just natural for me to ask, how can you just travel so spontaneously? And that's when I first heard about standby tickets. A standby ticket is a ticket that can be used by an airline employee or one of their travel buddies or friends, like Augie made me one after some time to travel on planes that are not completely full and that last part is very important because if you travel on a standby ticket it means you can travel cheap and it means you can travel in a nice class very often business class or even first class in certain cases but and that's a big but you can only get on the flight if there's space left so what does that mean? When Augie first offered me to take one of his standby tickets to come see him or spend the weekend with him, I was living in New York back then. This is back in 2010. And while we had talked on the phone, we both thought it might be nice to go to Toronto for the weekend, see the city a bit, and then I would fly back on Monday or Sunday night and be back at work for the new week. So I went to LaGuardia Airport and I checked in at the ticket counter and they gave me a standby ticket. It basically looks like a normal ticket with the exception that it doesn't have a seat on it yet. I went through security, all good, and then I was at the gate waiting for my flight to start boarding, which it did, and just in that moment, Augie gave me a call. And I picked up the phone, I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm just gonna jump on that flight. And he said, ah, oh, don't go on the flight, go over to gate, I don't remember the gate number, but let's say C22, and come to Dallas and we'll go somewhere from here. And I go, okay. <laughs> so suddenly, with standby tickets, changing flights becomes as easy as changing buses. So I went over to gate C22 and I flew to Dallas I later found out Augie wasn't able to make the Toronto flight out of Dallas and so that just gave us more options or at least we would spend the weekend together. So I flew to Dallas and we went for dinner and then we went afterwards to a pub. This was back when I was still drinking and we had a couple of beers and I think it was a Thursday or Friday night and Augie asked me so if you could go anywhere in the world where would you go? And I think I came up with ideas like Vancouver, Toronto, some place in Mexico and to this day I remember his look on his face and he was just like oh you're so 
boring. He looked up what flights had open seats and Tokyo was among them. Not only open seats, but Tokyo actually had open first class seats and I had never even flown business class up until that point. So we decided to go to Tokyo. I was super excited. We went back to his apartment for probably three or four hours of sleep and then we headed back to the airport and we jumped on a flight to go to Tokyo, Japan. Why do I say Tokyo, Japan? Because I texted my colleague that evening telling him that I might be back a couple days later than originally planned in New York. And I said, hey, instead of Toronto, Toronto, we're going to Tokyo and he texted me back Tokyo there's no Tokyo in Canada I said no 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 this is the Tokyo in Japan we're gonna go to Japan for the next couple days and I still remember his text back it just said whatever drugs you're doing stop doing them so long story short this is how I first ended up in Japan back in 2010 ironically I've actually gone through Japan a few times since then on a standby ticket a couple times was even stranded here meaning I was trying to go to Tokyo just to connect to another flight and while I was flying to Tokyo that other flight that I was connecting to had already filled up but those are stories for a different time so here you go those are standby tickets that's also how I first ended up coming to Tokyo back in 2010 with my dear friend Augie and with that I'll see you next time